Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living Loop 126. This is Wendy. Today we're going to be doing seven Dollar Tree DIYs for your farmhouse decor. If this is your first time stopping by, welcome and I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you like these projects, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. And also, even if you are already subscribed, you might want to take a peek just to make sure you still are because a couple of times a year, YouTube will do a, what would you call it? A cleanse or a scrub? I don't know, but they unsubscribe people that don't want to be unsubscribed. So make sure you check just to see that it's not grayed out, know that it is grayed out and you're still a subscriber. And now without further ado, let's get started. For this project, I'm going to use one of these plastic little square bins, the lid to this small canister, a super small stainless bowl, a little pizza table, and then this burlap bow from a bunny sign from Easter, and then my chalk paint in white and in ink. And so the first thing I'm going to do is take my Cricut spatula and just kind of shove it underneath these little feet. And they're just rubber, so I'm not pulling them out. They're not coming out that way because they're attached to the little mat inside of there. I'm just kind of slicing through it. And I actually end up slicing through my finger too. So be careful when you do that. Anyway, it just makes it flat. And then I'm gonna take my Waverly chalk paint in white and paint the entire piece. And this is just giving it a different finish so that it's more rough and not so plastic looking. I do decide to paint the stainless steel bowl as well, but I'll do that a little bit later. So now I'm just taking the lid of my canister and on a piece of cardstock, I just cut out a circle because I'm gonna make this into a teeny weeny little scale and this is gonna be the face of it. So I just took my ruler and made some hash marks to kind of mimic the look of the face of the scale and so I could have spent more time on this or printed out something but it was cute just being free-handed and kind of messy so then I just hot glued that to the bottom of the lid and then I'm gonna cut off the excess using my scissors so this is one of those little pizza tables that's what I call it I've always called that since I was a kid but it's the part that goes in the middle of your pizza and then keeps the box from smashing down onto your melted cheese and pepperoni and so my mom kind of as a joke put it in my craft room and said I'm sure you can do something with this so I I am so now I'm going to take those little pieces the little rubber pieces and hot glue those down to the top of the box and then I'm going to put my table feet into those and then I put some hot glue on top of that and put my bowl in place and then I'm going to hot glue the face onto the front of my box and then I'm going to take my sweet little bow and hot glue that right on top of the scale face and then this is when I decided that I wanted to go ahead and make the bowl and the face of the scale in the white instead of the stainless because the two stainlesses didn't match. But as an option, you could just paint the face of the scale and leave the bowl as the stainless because that's pretty cute too. So after I get everything all painted, I'm gonna go back in with my Waverly chalk paint in ink, and then I'll use a makeup sponge and give it the enamel wear look on all of the corners and edges. And here's a quick look at how he turned out, but I'm gonna show it again at the end of this video with another project that we do later. So for our next project, we're gonna be using three of these oil and vinegar bottles, and then a set of salt and pepper shakers. These are the glass ones. And then my Waverly chalk paint in white, and then wax and antique. And then we're also gonna use chalk paint in mineral, and then some jute twine. And the first thing I did was got my bottles and my salt and pepper shakers all ready to paint. So I just took off all the lids and I'm going to give it a couple of coats on each of these. I had some leftover water in my brush so it kind of started to bubble. But it is good to have a little bit of water in your paint just to kind of thin down the chalk paint. And I learned that from a viewer. So I'm just gonna do a couple of coats on all of these items. And then to give them a farmhouse distressed look, I'm gonna take my Waverly Wax in Antique and I'm gonna mix a little bit of mineral into that just to give it a different shade. And I actually learned that from Nicole over at the Weeks Nest and I'll have her channel listed in the description box below so you can check her out too. 
So I'm just going to add my distressing paint and then to knock that down, I go back in with my white and kind of do some downward strokes so that it's a little softer and just not so harsh. And I think it kind of gives it more of a sanded look, even though we're not sanding, but the distressing look of a sanded item. If your salt and pepper shaker lids don't go on right, you can just squeeze them and then they'll catch the threads of the part where you screw it on. So now I'm going to measure the front of my bottles and my salt and pepper shaker and I'm going to use my Silhouette Cameo 3 to make some words. And I'm using some scrap black vinyl which I get from Frisco Craft and I have another shipment on the way so I had to think of a couple things that I could do that didn't take up too much vinyl. So I'm using the font called Cream Candy, and that's the one where it's got the little swirlies at the beginning and end of the words. And you have to actually purchase that font from defont.com. You can get it free, but if you get it free, it just doesn't come with the little swirlies. So I get a lot of questions about that. So I just wanted to let you know. I also had a sweet viewer from Canada tell me that there's some way of adding swirls and pretties to the fronts and backs of your words and it's just using your keypad and I can't remember what she told me so if you know of a way to do that without having to purchase any special characters comment on how to do that and let all of our little crafting family know. So now I'm just gonna take the top part of the vinyl off and I'm having one say olive oil the other ones are gonna say canola oil and then one will say veggie oil because vegetable was too long. So I just pull that vinyl off and then I'm going to weed it out and get all the little insides of the letters off of there. And then I'm gonna take my transfer tape and then put it on top of those and cut them out and then place them on my bottles. And then also I'm cutting out a P and an S for salt and pepper or pepper and salt. And for those letters, I use the font Alorta Demo and that also is from defont.com. And I'll have those fonts listed in the description box below. And if you don't have a cutter, you could always just write these in freehand with a paint pen, or you can also purchase these in my Etsy shop, which is White Sparrow Living. So I'll have that linked in the description box below as well. So now I'm just taking my transfer tape and I like to use used transfer tape that's been used a couple times because it's not as sticky, but if it is a new piece, you can just rub it onto your surface or onto your jeans just to get some of that tackiness off and then it just works a lot better. So I'm just placing them in the middle of the bottles and that I'm going to put the S and the P on the salt and pepper shaker. So since these are going to be used for oil and it could drip or something on there, you could go back in with some Mod Podge and give it a coat so that it doesn't discolor and it stays safe. So after I get all of my decals on my bottles, I'm going to go in with some jute twine and on my salt and pepper shakers, I'm just going to tie a sweet little bow on each of those and then cut off the excess twine. And then for the oil bottles, I'm going to make some jute twine flowers by wrapping the jute around my two fingers three times and then tie another piece around that. And then I'll do that again another three times and then tie that also and then fan out my little petals so that it looks like a jute flower. And then I'll tie that to the neck of each of the bottles. Finished, and I think they turned out so super sweet. These would be so pretty on a kitchen tray that you have on your counter, like with your cooking utensils and just making a cute, cute vignette for in the kitchen that's functional, but super pretty. So I really love this and I hope you guys like it too. For our next project, we're going to be using one of these Dollar Tree wooden crosses that stands up. 
some white cotton string and some jute twine and then this little medallion from a sign that you've seen me use a million times some waverly wax in antique and then our hot glue gun and some scissors so the first thing I did was took a paintbrush and just painted on my antique wax at the base of my cross and then I'm going to take a paper towel and wipe that off and I should have at this point painted the sides and the top of the cross as well because that will show so I do go back in there and do that later but you'll see that in a second. So I had done another video where I used a cross and wrapped it with the string and the twine, but I had lost that footage and a lot of you were asking to see exactly how I did that in that grain sack pattern that's so farmhouse looking. So I thought I would do it for you again and just do a different DIY. So all I did was tie a knot at the base of the cross and then just started wrapping. I didn't even use any glue for this at the bottom. I ended up measuring where I'm going to put my stripes. So I stopped wrapping and then just used my ruler and made quarter inch lines. And then in the middle, I made a little bit larger stripe. And so when it was time to change to the white string, I just tied it off in the back and then kept going and then changed back to the jute by tying it off in the back again and then just continue that entire way. I added a little bit of hot glue just to make sure that it stayed in place and then once I get to the crossbars of the cross I'm going to make a left turn and then add one stripe to that side as well as the other side and the top. And then when I get to the ends of each of those crossbars and the tops I'm going to use hot glue on the front and back and I used my detail hot glue gun so that I could make a teeny weeny little line and it wouldn't soak through the juice. The cross in my other DIY, which I'll have listed in the description box below, it was a lot smaller so I didn't even measure my lines. I just used my eyeballs to decide where to put those lines. But this one is a little bit bigger so I wanted to make sure that I got it just right. So as I was actually editing this video and this part, I got a message from a sweet viewer who sent me a picture of the DIY that she had just made of this cross and i just uploaded the video about eight days ago and already she is on it because she sent me a picture and it looked so pretty and i just want to encourage you guys to send me your photos or if you have facebook or instagram if you would post a picture of it and tag me in it it's white sparrow living on both instagram and facebook and I would love for you guys to become my followers too. Oh, that didn't sound right. I would love for you guys to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll also be sure to share it on my story or whatever those are called. <laughs> But I just enjoy seeing you guys replicate some of these crafts and it's just so amazing to me to see your beautiful creations. I'm going to use that medallion and I stained it in the Waverly Wax in Antique and I made sure to get the sides as well. And then with my white paint pen, I'm going to write taste and see. And then around the bottom curve, I'm going to write that the Lord is good. And this is from Psalm 34, 8. And I did this one because the items that we're making in these DIYs are kitchen related. So I thought this would be perfect for a kitchen also. I didn't actually get my spacing right as far as where I started for that rounded bottom part, but it's okay, I just added some dots, but you might wanna start a little bit higher up on the left side so that it kinda of comes out even, but that's what these tests are for. So then I'm just gonna do my faux calligraphy and make those downstroke lines a little bit thicker with my paint pen. And then there's a little piece of wooden block that goes on the back of these medallions for the frame that they were placed in. So I just keep those all the time and I can lift anything I want. So I just used it again to lift it on the sign. So then I'm gonna take some scrap greenery and glue it to the back side so that it's just peeking out from behind. And then to make sure that it stays in place, I'll take another piece of jute twine and just wrap it around. And it kind of blends in in the front so you don't even see it.
And here's how it turned out. And I love this one even more than I love the other one just because it's larger and it's got the straighter sides. But I love this pattern, that grain sack pattern that everybody loves so much. I just think this turned out so pretty and I absolutely love decorating crosses. I did decide that there was an open space at the bottom where I could put Psalm 34, eight. And so with my paint pen, I just added it onto that and called it a day. But I love this and I hope you like it too. For our next project, we're gonna be using one of these microwavable plastic bowls, four of these Jenga pieces, a stove cover, the small one, and then a pretzel jar. I'm gonna use the lid and the bottom. And then from one of those eight by eight frames, I'm gonna use the medallion from the middle. And then I found this printable from Google Images that we'll be using for the scale face. And then some white chalk paint and wax in antique, as well as our chalk paint in mineral. And so all I did was use my white chalk paint and I'm gonna paint all of my pieces so that they have one nice cohesive covering and finish and they all look a little more rustic. And then I'm also gonna paint the back of the big medallion. And this is just gonna give my top part of my scale a little more to adhere to. And then I'm gonna take my heavy duty scissors and cut out the bottom portion of my pretzel jar. And this is a really tough plastic, but it takes a little while, but you can get it off of there. And it has a little bit of a dome to it. So I thought this would be perfect to go over the face of my scale. So then I'm just gonna cut out my scale printable and I will have this in my description box below so that you can print that out. And then I'm just gonna hot glue it to the inside of my lid from my pretzel jar. And I'm also gonna take a felt pen in black and make a little needle since I didn't have anything that looked like a needle. I can't find my clock hands and that was what I had planned to use for the middle, but I had to make do and I think this looks just as cute. So then I took my hot glue and just went around the very edge of the lid and then put my little dome on top of that. And I think it looks super cute. So now I'm gonna take some E6000 and my hot glue and place four of these Jenga pieces in the middle of my bowl. And I just spaced them out because I'm gonna then set my medallion and then my stove cover on top of that. And if you don't have the Jenga pieces to use as the part that props it up, you could also use a little Barbie table. I've seen a lot of people use those when making these scales. So just use whatever you have, and as long as it's level, it'll be cutie patootie, and you can actually use it to place things on top of it. So after I get it put all together, I'm gonna take the face of my scale and hot glue on the top and the bottom parts where the face actually touches the bowl and make sure that's all nice and secure. And so now I'm gonna take that same distressing mixture of the antique wax and my mineral chalk paint and then just give this some distressing because I want this to kind of match my bottles that I made earlier. So I just use a dry brush and just kind of brush over everywhere, including the little lifters and make sure that it's all nice and rustic looking. And here it is all finished. And I think this is so stinking cute. And technically for the cost of a jar of pretzels and a dollar 50, because the stove cover comes in a package of two, this is what it turned out to be. For some reason, that face of the scale, I feel like I've seen that somewhere before, like at my grandma and grandpa's house. I don't know if it's like a vintage piece that they had. Well, it wouldn't have been vintage for them, but anyway, I love how this turned out and don't forget that I'll have that printable in the description box below as long as I can figure it out. But it was super easy and I think it turned out so, so super cute. For our next DIY, I'm gonna use the middle funnel of this three-piece funnel set 
one of these plastic containers and they come in a set of two and then a paint roller and then just some miscellaneous scrap wood. I'm just gonna use the little Easter piece over there. And for our paint, we have the Waverly chalk paint in white and mineral, and then our wax and antique. And then from Folk Art, I'm gonna use the pure gold metallic paint. And then my heat gun or heat tool. And so all I'm gonna do is use the middle part of the funnel set, and I'm gonna have Michael J take the handle off and then with his handy dandy pliers he's going to bend the end piece so that it's pointed up and it was kind of hard to get him to understand which way i wanted it pointed but he ultimately got it and then once he gets it bent he's going to put it into the little hole of the funnel that's already there it's going to be really tight but that's what we want because we don't want it to go anywhere I really love that he never asks questions about why I want something done in a certain way. He just knows that I've got a crazy plan and just goes with my engineering madness and just does whatever I say. That is truly a good husband. <laughs> He's so cute, look at him. So I had had a viewer request that I try to put together using Dollar Tree items, some kind of vintage coffee grinder. So that's what this is gonna be. And it took me forever to figure out how to get a handle. And so when I saw these rollers, I thought that was perfect. And it turns out super cute. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is take my scissors again and cut off the handles of my little bucket. And then I slice off and get those trimmed off so that when you turn it upside down, you can't even tell that something was there. And then I'm gonna take my heat gun and I'm gonna make a little hole so that my funnel will actually slide right into it and make it a little smaller and I keep testing it so that when it does go in, it'll still be nice and snug. So after I get it to the size that I need, I'm gonna finally put it in there and then I'm gonna turn it over and add a bunch of hot glue. It was a little top heavy because of the paint roller, so I ended up taking a piece of floral foam and just sticking that on top of the bottom of that funnel and that just kept everything in place and gave it a little bit of weight. So now I wanna make a drawer and so I took that little piece of wood from a Dollar Tree Easter sign and this was just left over from another project and so I used my utility knife to kind of get it down to the size that I wanted but I didn't quite cut it straight so I just used a piece of sandpaper and then got it to where it was flat on all of the sides and then I just kind of rounded the corners to make it look more like a drawer. So now I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in white and just get that all nicely covered and give it the same finish for the entire piece. And then I'm going to go back in with my distressing and do some antique wax and then I'll add some white and then I'll go back and add some more wax and I just get it to the shade that I want where it's nice and light but looks like a wood tone. I ended up giving it a little bit more of the white after I paint my funnel. I was trying to go for like an aged copper look for the funnel part because when I look on Pinterest, that's kind of what they're all about. They have that finish on the top, but it's old and weathered. So with my gold, it was a little bit too bright. And so I had to knock it down with the antique wax to make it look older and more patinaed. But it was kind of clashing with my wood tone as far as like the strokes that were on there and so it got a little too busy so i kind of made it a little more solid by adding more white to the bottom part So now to make my drawer, I took one of those Amazon beads that I have in my Amazon store. I get questions about where these beads come from, but you can find it in my Amazon store that'll be linked in the description box below. And I just painted that with the gold and the antique wax. And then I did the same thing with my little piece of wood for my drawer and then just gave it some wood tone by making some streaks with the antique wax. And so I also put a dark coat around the edges so it would kind of look like a drawer that was sticking out or at least had some shadow and depth to it. And then I just hot glued that bead to my drawer and made that like the handle. And then I'm gonna take that whole piece and glue that to the front of my coffee grinder.
and start wrapping the handle so that it gives it a finished look. And this is the jute twine that's a little bit thicker and I got this off of the top of a metal bucket that I used in a different DIY. And I'm telling you, this stuff has lasted me quite a while because there's so much on the tops of those buckets. And in that DIY, I used three different ones. And so I always save this because it does come in handy and it's nice and thick too. So I just wrapped that along and added some glue every now and then and then just went all the way to the top of my handle. And then I'm gonna take a little bit more and put that around where the funnel and the box meet just to cover up any ickies that I don't wanna see. So I had happened to have some coffee beans from my sweet friend Joanna from our MOPS group, which is Mothers of Preschoolers. And she had given us each a bag of these home roasted coffee beans. And so I put those into the top and placed a sweet little flower in there. And here it is all done. And I think it really turned out super cute and adorable. And I was so happy to finally figure out how I could come up with something that resembled a coffee grinder. But I love it and I hope you guys like it too. For this Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to be using a white 8x10 frame, a wood medallion that you find in the crafter's aisle, and then a piece of scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby, and it's hard to see, but it's like a black plank wood type pattern, and then some random extra chain and an eye hook that I got from Dollar Tree, and then I'll be using my chalk paint in white and ink. And so the first thing I did was measured my frame because I'm going to be cutting out some words using my Silhouette Cameo 3. And so I measured both the frame and my piece of wood. So I'm going to paint my piece of wood with the white and then I was going to let the wood grain show through and just kind of do a whitewash. But I changed my mind and decided to go for, guess what, the enamelware look. So. I ended up painting it completely white and then went back in with my chalk paint in ink and using a makeup sponge. I'm going to go around the edges and I don't make the little chip marks until after I've gone all the way around because chances are I'm going to kind of go out of the lines and there might be a mess up or a bad edge and so I can use that as a place to make one of those chip marks and then after I get those done I'll just add whatever else I want I want this to be double sided so I'm going to do the enamel wear effect on both the front and the back So now I'm gonna take my frame apart and I'll use the backboard to trace around on the back side of my scrapbooking paper. And I wanted the planks to go horizontally so I made sure I got that in the right position. And then I'm just gonna cut that out and that's what I'm gonna place my vinyl lettering on. So I ran out of my black, I think I told you that already. So I only have little scraps to do black. So that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this in white vinyl for the larger part and then the black vinyl using my scraps. So I just cut out my words and I will have this decal in my Etsy shop which is White Sparrow Living and so while I'm weeding out my white I'm multitasking and cutting out my black and so this is going to say mom's kitchen is on the frame and then at the bottom on the plaque one side will say open and the other side will say closed so if you order this decal I can make it with whoever's name does the cooking in your kitchen in this case I put mom but I am definitely not the one that does the cooking here that's generally Michael J or my mom so in this case mom is definitely not me so if you have a nana or a granny or gaga or in our case dad you can decide whatever you want to use as the name at the top of this decal and I will do that for you so I'm just weeding out my letters using my sewing needle 
And I'm going to totally squirrel here for a second, but I got the most adorable perky prize from a sweet viewer, Cindy, in Texas. And I was so excited, and I'll show you what she sent me in my next video. But I love perky prizes and getting friend mail. And when it comes to love languages, I am bilingual, multilingual. I love receiving gifts. So, but it was perfect because my birthday was on the first. And so I just got this and thank you so much, Cindy. It totally made my day. Okay, so back to business. The fonts that I used on this are hello for moms and is and open and closed. And then for kitchen, I use the skinny. So I'll have all those font names in the description box below. And I downloaded those from defont.com. So when I was getting ready to place my decal, my battery totally died. And so I'm going to place it on the scrapbooking paper, but you're not going to see me do it. <laughs> So then I'm going to take my paint pen and just to give it some more cuteness, I made little dots on each side of the words on both the front and the back. And then I'm going to take my little eye ring and put it right in the center of the top part of my plaque. And I just twisted it in gently to make sure that I didn't split my wood. And then once I got that in, I took a little piece of chain and decided how long I wanted that to hang. And then I'm just going to use my needle nose pliers and open up the link so that I can pull out and make it the length that I want. And then I'm going to measure my frame to try and get the middle so that I can place the chain and my sign will hang perfectly level. But it was a weird number on my ruler so I decided instead to kind of cheat and use a piece of my paper and just fold it in half. And then that way I would find the middle part more easily. And then I just took a white chalk pen and marked that and then used my hot glue and lots of it and placed my chain into it. And I gave it a lot at the top so that it would have more hold. And then I took that same scrap paper and just pushed that into the glue to give it a covering over that chain for more security. So then I'm going to take this buffalo check ribbon flower that I had made in another DIY and I'll have that video listed in the description box below. And then I just took a couple of leaves of lamb's ear that I get from Walmart and I hot glued those to the top as well as my rose. And here it is all done and I think this is my favorite. It's always so hard to video something that is reflective like this so unfortunately you can see my living room chandelier and my shelves and stuff so it's kind of distracting but i think this turned out so cute and now our little enamelware mini scale has a friend and so i think this turned out so super cute and again this only cost two dollars don't forget to check to see if you're still subscribed and let me know in the comments if you did get unsubscribed just out of curiosity and i hope you guys enjoyed all of these projects i hope everyone is doing well and staying safe i hope everybody has a blessed day and remember to always be the light bye